Because now we're going to do John Vulcan uh, is a man with a mission. He has a vision to save the lives of young people by changing those lives, and he has given his fortune to do it. The John Vulcan Academy has three locations. Headquarters are outside Vancouver, British Columbia. Right now, 43 students live here with plans for more. The next John Vulcan Academy is located outside Seattle, Washington. 25 young men are part of the program here, and construction is underway to house even more. The Welcome Home Ranch is the third facility. It's located just outside Phoenix, Arizona. And now it is home for 25 students. His students are young men and women who are choosing to turn from drug and alcohol addiction toward lives with purpose. You can come such a long way doing small and simple things every day. We're just so lucky. This man, a Latter-day Saint convert, extends a helping hand to those of his own and other faiths, and many come from throughout the Intermountain West. It's great here, it's a positive environment, it keeps you busy, it, it keeps you doing healthy and happy things, and I'm very thankful for it. Faith and hope have been absolutely instrumental in my development here. And that vision stretches halfway around the world to East Africa, where John Vulcan's Lift the Children Foundation saves thousands there. It's not often that you meet individuals of this magnitude, of this caliber, that have devoted their lives solely for making change and bettering those of others. Join us now for the remarkable rags to riches story of a man whose determination and love encompasses the lives of those half a world away and close to home. Every time they're down and they push through, they're stronger because of it. He says to them all, there is hope. The John Vulcan story. Work begins early for 25 young men at the Welcome Home Ranch outside Phoenix. Responsibilities include the heavy lifting as well as making sales for another 25 at the Price Co. outside Seattle. And whether it's stocking shelves, replacing produce, or baking bread, the demands of working at Price Pro outside Vancouver, British Columbia are constant for more than 40 young men and women. They are all students of the John Vulcan Academy. Three locations, one purpose, to help them conquer their addictions to drugs and alcohol. Do the best you can do. And this man, who is guiding, correcting, and embracing, has given his considerable wealth to pay for their recovery. He knows his students because he lives with them. They hate what they've done. They hate to change. They hate what they're doing. You know, there, there's not much love on anything. So they come here and, and then they develop trust and they develop uh, faith. What sets this program apart is that John and his wife Shauna and their staff ask the young people ages 18 to 34 to make a minimum two-year commitment toward not just sobriety, but changing their lives completely. I weighed 200 pounds and I was lazy and I was mean and I was upset all the time and now I'm not that person. In 10 months, Anna has become an enthusiastic salesperson in the Price Pro store, and she has risen to a leadership position among the women. Jordan has spent 13 months in the program learning how to work a ranch and learning about himself. I didn't see myself living another year. In this mostly student-run program, he aims to become as his mentors are. Without the examples that I have had, there's no way that I would be here right now. So I, in turn, want to be able to give that to somebody else who's looking. Now, I, I have so much hope, and I have so much drive, and I like, I, like we say in our promise, I am achieving my full potential. The students live together, they eat together, and before they bless their dinner every night, they make a promise together. My life was out of control. My life was out of control. My addiction was controlling me. My addiction was controlling me. I chose to change. I chose to change. I will graduate from the John Vulcan Academy. I will graduate from the 
John Vulcan Academy. And be the best person I can be. And in turn, John Vulcan promises to provide training, educational and job opportunities so that they can envision a future free of addiction. Curtis has spent 22 months at the Academy in Vancouver, and after graduation, he will complete an eight-week course to become a certified meat cutter. He loves the concept of former addicts helping each other. As opposed to having a, a trained counselor in here telling you what's wrong, you have someone who's been through, been through the trenches and, and have came out the other end, so now we coach the, the more junior brothers and sisters in the program. Alex cares for dozens of horses whose owners board them at the ranch. He also supervises his fellow students in the barns. Just 16 months ago, his life was a very different story. I got released from jail and my mom picked me up and she took me to McDonald's and said, I have a program for you to go to, it's a two year minimum. The length of time seemed daunting, but it has given him, he says, time to learn. It really teaches me sober living, sober living habits, uh, confidence, and it really just, you, you, you have a chance to rebuild yourself and forget what you were before. Alex plans to stay in Arizona, has an apprenticeship, and hopes to run his own barn someday. I really, really believe that. I think there's a God in heaven, and he said to me, John, I make you rich, but I watch what you do with the money, because I, I handle the money just like it's, um, um, it's sacred money. What he has done is create three different environments where young people live together and eat together. They share cooking responsibilities. The Vulcans and supporters will dedicate a new $80 million state-of-the-art center in Vancouver in April 2015. The facility includes living spaces, recreation areas, and both individual and group counseling rooms. James, his wife Heather, and baby daughter Poppy are part of the community in Arizona. As the program director, he knows of what he speaks as a former addict. Instead of just thinking about how you're going to change your life, you get the time to practice changing your life. And that, in turn, saves your life. And that is the bottom line at each facility, to save lives by changing them. At the ranch, residents from nearby neighborhoods board their horses. The students care for the animals and learn how to run a ranch. In Seattle, all of the proceeds from furniture sales go to the Academy or Vulcan's Lift the Children Foundation. And it's the same in Vancouver. Everyone who shops at PricePro is literally donating to charity and seeing a difference. It takes a great deal of courage and that they're here doing that, you can see it in the way that they conduct themselves. They're so professional and they're amazing, amazing people. The students return that compliment to their benefactor, John Vulcan. I owe him my life, really. You know, I really do. He didn't, he didn't have to put his money towards this. Um, he's helped me a lot along the way and he's a very inspiring man, so I think the world of him. And the truly beautiful part of this is that John Vulcan thinks the world of his students. Those who come on board here, they're struggling, huge struggle. And I love them and I respect them. Anybody walking through the door, no matter how bad they were, I love them because I say, I want to change my life and I need help. And they deserve the respect and the love. Where once there was despair, now there is a man who offers hope. John Vulcan never stops. He oversees his foundation from three locations, living in Vancouver, but traveling to Seattle and Phoenix every month. We learn here to get ready for life. To understand what drives him, you have to know something about his life. John Vulcan was born in eastern Germany in 1941. His father was killed at the end of World War II. John says his father did not have to go to war because he was the only doctor serving people in six villages. He said, no, I can't face my children when, I, when they grow up and they ask me, Dad, where were you during the war? And I cannot say I was sitting it out at home. Or actually, he said when, when Germany was burning. 
After the war, his mother placed him and his two brothers in an orphanage for a time. When people say, oh, you lived in an orphanage, poor fellow, no, 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 no. It was a good time, <laughs> you know. We had enough to eat. At age 14, he traveled to West Germany on vacation. I wrote my mother a letter and said, I'm not going back to East Germany. She trusted me at 14. She said, yeah, there's no future for you here. Stay. That is when he says he became well acquainted with hard work. When he was 18, John immigrated to Canada. He says he never met a job he couldn't do. He grew flowers, learned carpentry, became a salesman, and eventually started his own business, United Buy and Sell, which became United Furniture Warehouse, a corporation with more than 150 stores in North America and annual sales topping $200 million a year. He describes his life as full of ups and downs and good and bad but remains very grateful to a Latter-day Saint family in Las Vegas who taught him about the restored gospel of Jesus Christ when he was 26. That part with Heavenly Father and my relationship to him made instant sense. And after that, I listened to everything else too. They say, well, that, I never heard that before. Up at 6 a.m. to bed at 9 or 10 p.m., six days a week. First, he pushes himself. My concern is, that Heavenly Father is going to say to me one day, he said, you know, John, you could have done better. So now he says, But does this place for you have the same spirit? Oh, yeah. He checks himself to get the right feeling about moving forward. And where does that come from? I think that's the spirit teaching us when you do kind things and you feel good about it. The spirit lets you know you've just done the right thing. He may be a German-Canadian with loyalty to both countries, but he has always loved the United States and been grateful for his business success here. I get hurt when people knock America. He began to develop a different vision in 1995 when he became Entrepreneur of the Year for Canada's Pacific region. There were several thousand business people that applauded, and, and I said, now what? I got all the money. I achieved... Anything after this, it's just making more money. He sold his stores and put the money into a foundation. His focus turned to helping young people with addictions learn life skills. I traveled Europe and North America and visited these places, and they call them therapeutic communities. It's a community that heals. John and his wife Shauna met later in life. They attended the same Latter-day Saint ward, and as a real estate agent, she advised him on properties. I would go to meetings with them and fell in love with this man that did so much to help other people, help the vulnerable, and um, I thought, what a Christ-like man. Why is it become a senior? Loving but demanding is how he describes himself. We kick butts. But more often than not, we put our arm around it and say, you can do this, you can do this. And sometimes at tears, they say, yeah, yeah. He does not just want to help these young people overcome addictions. He wants them to learn to be good employees. So you do 180 minus 84 minus 71. Ryan oversees the online studies of his fellow students. He tried nine other treatment programs but says after 20 months here, John Vulcan's vision has made the difference. That hard driving personality where sometimes he can be real tough to work for, but then you see him later that night and he's crying about you guys and saying that you're awesome and you can't help but absolutely love the guy. Morgan has spent the last 10 months in the academy in Vancouver. Her twin brother, Justin, is doing well in the Seattle program. She loves John and Shauna Vulcan. I love spending time with them. They're, they gave me my life back and I will be forever grateful and I wouldn't do anything for them. We just try to make a difference, you know, and uh, Mother Teresa, I love that woman. She said, uh, you know, um, God does not expect you to succeed. He expects you to do the best you can do. Always think where it leads to the end, where we're going to go with this like the best boss they will ever have who steers them towards success, like a father or a grandfather who loves them into confidence. John Vulcan has one message day after day. There is hope.
In October of 2014, the Dalai Lama chose John Vulcan to receive his Humanitarian of the Year Award for his compassion and contribution to creating social change by effectively changing lives. Many wealthy people, he said, give millions to charity or create foundations that help people, but few in the world give everything. The Vulcan Foundation has another branch. Lift the Children covers 100% of the operating costs for food, shelter, education, and health care for more than 10,000 children in more than 80 orphanages in Kenya, Uganda, Mozambique, and Liberia. This, too, is a unique model in which Africans are helping Africans. We also have implemented three permaculture projects to date. And the power of one permaculture project is it can educate all the community's farmers. And the whole community can, can then use that knowledge to grow food for their own families. The Vulcans say they could not operate this or their recovery program without successful business people on their advisory boards. And it draws individuals such as me, like moth to a light, that, you know, we're, we want to be part of this solution. And if we can make a difference, anyone can make a difference. Making a difference comes in many forms. Shauna's brother, Carson Brown, came up with the idea for an academy location near where he and his wife Jennifer and their children live in Arizona. Their hearts are in this project, too. This is a privilege to be involved with saving lives. What Carson does in helping John do what he does and, and helping the students do what they do to regain their lives. Each and every person is so valuable and they're so important. And if we can affect one life, it's worth it. And uh, here I believe we're going to affect many lives. We speak of redemption, we speak of second chances and starting over, but it's another when you get to see it in action. And that has been an invaluable blessing for myself, for my children to see. No one pushes religion at the academy. The young people may attend services if they wish. But everyone we spoke with talked of how much faith and hope influence recovery. Mike is one of the first graduates in Arizona. He is an apprentice electrician now and plans to stay close to his friends at the program. Now that I have my spirituality, um, you know, I can see where that fit in and where that teaches me to go and where I stand with it. And so it's, it's definitely played a, a major role, if not the biggest role, in, you know, overcoming this. Jamie says she loves her responsibilities overseeing the supplies in the produce department of Price Pro. She has come out of her shell in just six months, she says. I grew up not religious, but since being here, I've been going to the Mormon church every Sunday, and it sure helped me. In 18 months with the program, John has been a manager of the furniture store and is now acting director of the program in Seattle. He says he was in and out of the prison system as a young man, but now has rediscovered the faith of his childhood. I haven't lived my life the right way and in this program I've been able to gain a testimony of the church. I'm working on my patriarchal blessing and my goal is to, when I get out of here is to, to, to be, have my, the Melchizedek priesthood. I never went on a mission but maybe this was what I intended to do because we do it, we, 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 we helping a lot of people to find their ways. Francis of Assisi, he said uh, go out and preach the gospel even if you have to use words. Isn't it beautiful? Just do it. Development of the whole person, John Vulcan believes, must happen before each student leaves. Learning to both serve people and learning to work. I like to see the boss say, he, he graduated from the John Vulcan Academy. He's the last one to lay off because he is the best employee I have. Graduation from the John Vulcan Academy brings joy and tears and a renewal of life. Colby Johnson of Holiday, Utah is one of them. He describes his aha moment when he first counseled new students. I was able to sit down and talk to them and tell them, listen, I know, I know what you're going through and I can, I can help you. And felt like it was just kind of like, okay, this is, this is why I'm here. It's not only for me, it's for others too. His parents have now become advocates, helping other families find this program. They remember visiting Colby for the first time a year after he entered the academy in Vancouver. 
we pulled up and there he was, just smiling, arms open. He, he was, he looked like a different person. It was really, it was special. I think the parents need to learn that their son or daughter can be self-reliant, that they might have an addiction problem, but that's more of a symptom than mm -hmm. being able to become self-reliant and, you know, come to their full potential. I see what Colby is going to accomplish in, the, in, in years to come. I see a big brother, you know, I see an example. The young people oh, yeah. know that John and Shauna Vulcan could be living comfortably anywhere in the world. Instead, they choose to be with them. This is our life. We've gone away a few times um, to take a little vacation and, and we're, the first three days are pretty good and it's like, oh, we gotta get back there. We, we miss it here. So this is where our heart is, truly. I think there's a spiritual thing that, that you know, you don't get from making money. It's from doing the right thing. And really, every morning, every night, I thank Heavenly Father for the privilege to do what I'm privileged to do. This is a modern day story of faith, hope, and charity. John and Shauna Vulcan share a vision and give everything they have to help children in East Africa and young people in North America change their lives for the better. It would be no surprise then that Matthew chapter 25 verse 40 is John Vulcan's favorite. Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. The message spreads quietly from the Canadian landscape to the waterways of the Northwest to the beauty of the desert. There is hope. Oh yeah, I feel good.